Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Good Morning Tobago, right here on Tobago Updates. Guys, you know when you see me sitting here, it's because we're about to have those conversations that you want to have to get your morning started while I ask the questions that you want to know. Now, before we get into this morning's conversations, I'm going to kick off this morning by giving you your news in 90 seconds. So, 60 year, a 68-year-old Edmund. Edward Eastman became Tobago's fifth murder victim for 2023. The resident of Old Ground Golden Lane was shot dead at his home on Wednesday morning. According to his wife, gunmen drove up to his home and shot at him while he was outside. Eastman ran inside the house, but he quickly succumbed to his injuries. Eastman's murder came just a week after Daniel Thomas was murdered at his home in Signum Hill. That murder remains unsolved despite ACP Collis Hazel's firm call for perpetrators to surrender themselves. So far, all of Tobago's five murders for the year were committed using firearms. Additionally, political leader of Unity of the People, Nicosi Phillips, called on the Chief Secretary, Farley Augustine, and Minority Leader, Kelvon Morris, to put their political differences aside and develop a crime plan for Tobago. Following Tobago's fifth murder, Phillips pleaded with the Executive Council of the THA and the Minority Council to act on behalf of Tobagoonian in Tobago's best interest. Phillips also criticized the recent heated exchange between Prime Minister Dr. Keid Rowley and Chief Secretary Farley Augustine, where Rowley called for an early election while Augustine instructed Rowley to mind his own business. Phillips reminds the leaders that young people were looking on. And finally, Dean Passad, president of the Online Gaming Agents Association of Trinidad and Tobago, has urged all lottery agents not to participate in the National Lottery Com Control Board's new court pay payment scheme. Launched on Monday, an email addressed to lotto boot operators instructed the judiciary instructed that the judiciary cannot enforce risks that are only worth $1.50 per transaction. The email indicated that the latest court pay fee was imposed without consultation by the association and its agents and without proper notice of how the system works by the NLCB. On Monday, the judiciary announced Court pay can be facilitated at lotto boots according to the country. Across the country, however, Passard complained that they were not consulted about it. And that was on news in 90 seconds. Guys, so as we continue our conversations here this morning, we're continuing with a bit of what we saw happening there in our news in 90 seconds, where Nicosi Phillip called for the leaders here in Tobago within the THA to come together and establish a crime plan. But he also discussed a bit about the comments that were made by Dr. Keith Rowley and the current sitting Chief Secretary, Ali Chavez Augustine, saying to them that young persons are looking on. I mean, for uh, the last three weeks, if I'm not mistaken, we have been talking about having this conversation about that call by Dr. Rowley for a fresh election to take place here on the island of Tobago, a fresh THA election, that is. And so as we continue this conversation moving forward, we had, we had a number of comments coming out from a number of professionals here on the island nation, and also nationally. And so this morning, as we continue that conversation, Dr. M Hamid Gandhi is going to be here, who is a university professor, and we're going to be talking about the fact that there is no legal case binding the THA to have an election as per the call by the Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley. Good morning, Dr. Gandhi. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you so much for um, coming on here to Tobago Updates. And so, I mean, a number of experts have um, came out over the past two weeks and um, gave, given their opinions and, you know, their expert advice as to why uh, the Prime Minister has no real argument in his statement when calling for an election for the leader of the Tobago House of Assembly, which is Farley Chavez Augustine, to quickly call an election. Now, you would have made comments stating that there was no legal basis for such a request. Um, 
all in all, in the grand scheme of things, you know, we want to kick off by getting some of your opinions on everything that has been unfolding between the Chief Secretary here in Tobago and um, the Prime Minister. Well, I think that um, the first thing that we have to appreciate is that the Tobago House of Assembly Act um, <clears throat> has to be read in conjunction with the national constitution because Chapter 11A of the Constitution anchors the Tobago House of Assembly in the Constitution. And then everything in there states that this must be done as prescribed, that must be done as prescribed. <coughs> so you have, for example, um, Section 141A, subsection 2 of the Constitution, which says that the Assembly shall consist of a presiding officer and such other members qualified and appointed in such manner and holding office upon such terms and conditions as may be prescribed. So the as may be prescribed part is the part where you have to go somewhere else um, to, to find um, what the terms and conditions of service of members of the Tobago House of Assembly are. So when we go, so that's Act 39 of 1996 amended the Constitution to insert the Tobago House of Assembly in Chapter 11A of the Constitution and basically laid out everything to be done as may be prescribed. So the as may be prescribed takes us to Act Number 40 of 1996, which is the Tobago House of Assembly Act. And in there, you will find that provision is made for the election of assemblymen and the nomination of councillors, the selection of councillors, etc. all of that which constitutes the assembly. And the reality is that there is no prescribed formula for members elected to the Tobago House of Assembly to have any penalty attached to their service in respect of them changing their political allegiance. So it doesn't exist. And some of the calls that were made, one can understand them because it's coming from an opposing political party. And wanting an election, you know, it's something that is, is not unusual. It is not an unusual request to make. But uh, as far as the Tobago House of Assembly Act is concerned, there is no issue with regard to persons changing their allegiance. That's a, a separate matter. Um, in in my, my Sunday column of two, uh, you know, I, I, I wrote uh, about the issue of the Commonwealth Latimer House principles, which were approved by the Commonwealth Heads of Government um, at their meeting in Abuja, Nigeria in 2003. And the Latimer House Principles um, document is one that spells out the independence of the judiciary and the independence of parliamentarians. And under independence of parliamentarians, it is very, very clear that changing your party allegiance should not constitute a basis upon which you should lose your seat. So this is 2003. The Commonwealth agreed this, and this was approved by Commonwealth heads of government. Um, it's not a widely known document. It's not a document that, that, that people cite in their everyday commentary. But I felt that the content of um, the document was very relevant and germane to the discussion that was at hand. Okay, excellent. And how do you um, perceive the current banter between the Prime Minister and the Chief Secretary to be affecting the relationship between Trinidad and Tobago? Well, I... I don't know necessarily that it, it affects the relationship between Trinidad and Tobago. It's a call for an election in Tobago. And um, the Prime Minister is on a, leads a different political party um, to the uh, political situation in the Assembly. <coughs> Excuse me. So that it's, it's the kind of situation that um, I think that <coughs> one has to appreciate that it, it's a political demand that is being made, which will create a political opportunity ahead of the due date for an election. As it stands now, <coughs> the Tobago House of Assembly has a fixed date for when it will stand dissolved. The only way that can be altered is if the very members of the Assembly themselves decide among themselves by majority vote that they wish to alter the date on which the assembly will stand dissolved and to advance the date to an earlier time. That's the way that it is to be done. So calling on the chief secretary to do this 
um, <clears throat> and then you know citing that he is an independent and the others are all independents and so on um, really is, is, is not getting to the heart of the matter because you cannot dissolve the Tobago House of Assembly by a one-man show or a one-woman show. But do you see a conflict in what the Prime Minister is saying, where on one hand he's saying when it comes to administrative business concerning the THA, he doesn't get involved because the Constitution doesn't allow him to, but then going ahead to ask the Chief Secretary to call an election due to the, you know, the political... Um, changeover we might see that's happening on the in Tobago in the yeah, well, uh, <clears throat> the Prime Minister is right in saying that he doesn't get involved in, in, in assembly affairs and he can't get involved in assembly affairs on that score he's right on the other score according to the election that is seeking political opportunity um, he would certainly like to have an election to be able to test the, the, the waters again um, the difference is that in the national constitution the Prime Minister on his or her own can advise the president to dissolve parliament and have an election. And that is certainly the way in which that business is conducted. In the Tobago House of Assembly, it was designed very differently. And I remember at the time, one of the things that, that one of the architects of this act was concerned, um, A.N.R. Robinson, was very clear in his mind about two things. One, he did not want a president sitting in Port of Spain to have any power to dissolve any assembly in Tobago. That was one. And the second one, he did not want any one individual in that assembly to have any power to decide to, to um, advise a president sitting in Port of Spain about dissolving the assembly. What he wanted was that the assembly would have a fixed date for elections. And if there was the desire to deviate from that fixed date, then the members by majority vote would be the ones to make the change so that um, it, it's, it's a collective decision making process to have an election in Tobago. It's not an individual one. Now, what was done in, a, in an amendment in 2021 was to give the chief secretary the opportunity to advise on the holding of an election in circumstances such as took place in 2021, where there was a 6-6 tie and it was inconclusive. So the Chief Secretary was given powers by the National Parliament to be able to make a call and, and to advise in respect of holding a, an election in a situation where the House um, was unable to uh, resolve itself into continuing its business, which took place after the 6th in January of 2021. And then during the course of the year, <clears throat> the Act was amended to permit the Chief Secretary to have a certain uh, degree of leeway to advise on an election. But outside of that power that was given to the Chief Secretary, the Chief Secretary does not have the power in his or her own right to be able to advise on a dissolution. It is the members, collectively speaking, by majority vote, who can do that. A substantive difference. So calling upon the Chief Secretary to do this, um, it really would have to be perhaps a bit, a bit wider than just the Chief Secretary, uh, because this is not a situation where you have an inconclusive outcome. The assembly is continuing its business. The members were all elected. The issue of a political party is immaterial to the functioning of the assembly. And that is, I think, the one area where a lot of persons are getting um, <clears throat> caught up in this process, thinking about how the national parliament operates and trying to superimpose that on the Tobago House of Assembly, when the Tobago House of Assembly is a very different organization in terms of its structure and its powers. Um, I brought the issue of the Commonwealth Latimer House principles into the discussion to, um, to raise the issue that shifts of party allegiance from a moral and philosophical standpoint is not regarded as a ground on which you ought to lose your seat. And this is something that Commonwealth heads of government agreed in 2003. Uh, and that was not forming part of the debate at the time when the call was made. Excellent. Thank you for the clarity there. And uh, finally, uh, one of the questions that have been asked is persons are confused as to what capacity the Prime Minister should have used to make such a call. Some thought that because it was such a political statement, he should have used it, um, made this comment in his capacity as the leader of the PNM, as opposed to Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, how, what are your thoughts on that as well? You know, the Prime Minister leads a political organization and um, his party is not in power in Tobago at the moment. 
so that um, <clears throat> he would have made that call um, seeking a political opportunity for his party to be able to have an electoral contest once again. So that from a political standpoint, there's nothing wrong with a prime minister making that kind of demand. From a prime ministerial standpoint, he is already on the public record as saying that he doesn't take part in assembly business. And on that score, he's right. He knows that that's not the area where he can go. Politically, he can make the call. Um, and I imagine that the Tobago Island Council of the PNM would have supported um, the call that was made by the prime minister because they too would certainly like to have um, another bite of the cherry in terms of an election long before the due date <clears throat> for that in 2025. And um, I, I think that, you know, from that point of view, um, you know, it is it is a situation that, um, you know, I, I see no, no fault with the prime minister making the call. You can always make a try. Um, if they take the bait, well, then that's that's on them, not on him. And I think that that is that that is um, the critical part of this. But there is there is another dimension to this, um, which I think uh, in terms of being reflective about the situation. The response of the PNM to the call by the then PDP members in, after the January 2021 election, where it was a 6-6 tie, um, the call for power sharing. Um, at the time, you know, they were, the, the, the PDP members of, in the January 2021, um, after the January 2021 outcome, were offering power sharing. And they were offering, well, you have the chief secretary position, we will take deputy chief sec and two other defined portfolios. And uh, we can go ahead, we, we arrange on who the uh, presiding officer would be. Uh, an entire power sharing roadmap was laid out and the PNM passed on it. They chose not to engage it. And uh, the, the PNM members in the assembly, obviously in consultation with their other colleagues, they passed on the power sharing. They would have had the chief secretary's position. They would have had it. They made a tactical blunder in passing on it. And I think that they rolled the dice on amending the THA Act to give the chief secretary certain powers to advise on another election. And when they had that election, there was no need for any power sharing discourse anymore because the people spoke even more resoundingly than was the case in January of 2021. So 2021 was a pivotal year on two fronts. One, the decline by the PNM of the offer of power sharing, and two, rolling the dice on having another election or creating the conditions for another election in 2021, by which time, 11 months later, the electorate had formed a different view. There was a higher turnout, and uh, we saw what happened because in a, in a, in a small um, electorate, you know, you, you get a, a jump into an order of, of 6 or 7% and you see what can happen, which is exactly what took place. So I think that, you know, there is a, um, a, a bit of a desire not to try and see if we can get back to the polls and take advantage of what may have gone on between Mr. Duke and some of his former colleagues who chose to resign from his party. Uh, and and there, is no, there is no adverse consequence for resigning from a political party. The same would happen if, if um, you know, a PNM member who is an elected member in the assembly would have resigned from the PNM. But nothing would happen to that person in respect of their membership in the assembly. But <clears throat> whatever happens in the political party, that, that's a different story. Correct. So I think that um, one needs to be able to examine a number of angles. But I think 2021 was a pivotal year for Tobago on those two fronts. <clears throat> okay. And before you go, Dr. Ghani, um can you reiterate to the people of Trinidad and Tobago why they cannot try to apply the whole philosophy of crossing the floor in the national constitution to the THA Act? Yes, well, the, the, the reality is that the same constitution that has crossing the floor principles that were established in 1978, Act Number 15 of 1978, uh, amended Section 49 of the constitution to add an additional ground for vacating your seat in the national parliament in the House of Representatives, which is that if you resign from or you were expelled by the political party on whose ticket you were elected, that could constitute a ground for you being removed from your seat. And that certainly happened in the case of Herbert Baldy in 2013. But the very same constitution has in chapter 11A, section 141A, subsection 2 is very clear 
that the, the presiding officer and the, um, you know, and, and such other members are qualified and appointed in such manner, I'm trying to quote from it, the document itself, and holding office upon such terms and conditions as may be prescribed. So in the very same constitution, it delineates a different basis for members of the Tobago House of Assembly. So it says, as may be prescribed, well, where, is it, where it is prescribed is in Act Number 40 of 1996, which clearly sets out a different set of terms and conditions for members of the Tobago House of Assembly to function. It does not have any similarity with what is put in a national constitution for the House of Representatives. So the same national constitution has two sets of arrangements, one for the House of Representatives and another one for the Tobago House of Assembly. And the Tobago House of Assembly, one is prescribed elsewhere, which is Act 40 of 1996. And therefore, you, you can't compare the National House of Representatives with the Tobago House of Assembly. There's no basis for the comparison. The Constitution separates the two. Thank you so much, Dr. Ghani. And thank you for coming and giving us your time here this morning on Tobago Updates. Guys, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with a lot more conversation right after this. It's a brand new morning, rise up to a brand new dawn.